From the mid-19th to the mid-20th centuries, railroads rose to prominence as the leading method of fast, reliable, long-distance land transportation, moving people and supplies to where they were needed. Throughout the 1800s, the American public developed an infatuation with this heartbeat of their expanding nation, the steam train. Not surprisingly, toy makers began to emulate this transportation mainstay in miniature as the 20th century approached. Contrary to what the popular movie Back to the Future shows, however, model trains were not invented by Doc Brown in 1885. In reality, the German company Marklin first invented the model train in 1891. Initially, these model trains were hand-powered, but at the dawn of the 20th century, the U.S. firm Lionel invented the first electric-powered model train in 1901. The model train hobby expanded and grew during the first few decades of the 1900s, not only as powered toys for children, but also as a unique new hobby for adults. Electric trains became a leading tech gadget by the 1950s, but as the 20th century waned, other gadgets such as radio-controlled cars, computer games, and smartphones overshadowed the model train. Meanwhile, digital technology thoroughly infiltrated the model train hobby as well. For the last 30 years, digital command control and the Java model railroad interface easily allowed more sophisticated digital technology in model trains. DCC and JMRI offer more than enough challenge to satisfy the most ardent electronic and computer hobbyists. In addition, Bruce invented the Computer Model Railroading Interface, or CMRI, which he first introduced to model railroader readers in 1985. CMRI is still one of the most used systems for adding signaling and automation to your layout. The public's fascination with model trains remains strong here in the 21st century. Movies and TV programs featuring trains keep capturing the public's imagination, and train shows keep getting strong attendance from families with children. Model railroaders from all walks of life continued to build and operate model railroads of all sizes. Bruce Chubb, a lifelong model railroader of Grand Rapids, Michigan, has always dreamed of building a model train layout that could outlive him. My whole thrust for my life has been the Sunset Valley and making it a museum quality, world class. Uh, worthy of preservation. That was my whole thrust for the first half of my life. Bruce built his first Sunset Valley in modular sections during the 1960s and 70s in his modest home. Then in the early 90s, Bruce retired and moved into a new house with a much larger 2,600 square foot basement. Building his layout with modular sections gave Bruce a chance to prove the viability of his construction methods. And then we did prove the concept because we built that railroad in my first lifetime. And then we decided to move to a new house because I wanted to expand the railroad ten times. I wanted more live interchange and on and on. So we uh, moved it. Uh, my crew, we had eight people in our crew at that time, small compared to now we have 38 to 40 people volunteering in the projects. And we disassembled it in about two weeks and we moved it in one night in a truck. One of our volunteers had uh, access to a truck and we moved it and then reset it up, expanding it about 10 times. Since that time, Bruce has realized his dream of expanding the Sunset Valley. 
He has also attracted some 40 volunteers from the Grand Rapids area to help maintain and operate the Mammoth Railroad. In recent years, Bruce started to seriously explore how the Sunset Valley could outlive him and keep on providing enjoyment to others who love model trains. Bruce has teamed up with retired architect and modeler Ralph Moxley. Together, they began putting some legs on Bruce's dream of keeping the Sunset Valley Model Railroad alive. Met Bruce about six years ago, came to one of his operating sessions, thoroughly enjoyed it, totally overwhelmed, but I really got into it, and I kept coming back. About two years ago, Bruce and I started talking about uh, uh, maybe developing a facility to relocate his Sunset Valley Railroad into a new facility somewhere here in Grand Rapids, because this is, this is really a, a world treasure. I mean, people literally come from all over the world to see the Sunset Valley, and we get tons of visitors and operating sessions uh, on a regular basis, and we'd hate to lose that at some point. Uh, Bruce is, you know, like all of us, is not going to be around forever, and we really want to preserve this. So we started talking about how can we make this kind of an ongoing, everlasting thing. And uh, we started talking about setting up a Michigan corporation uh, here. And uh, we decided to uh, set up a board of directors. And I ended up being the president of the board of directors. And currently we have nine members on the board of directors. I'm on my third design right now. I started out with basically just Bruce Chubbs. Sunset Valley, about a 17,000 square foot facility. We've really expanded uh, beyond just the Sunset Valley. A model railroading museum set in Michigan begs the question, what about modeling Michigan and more contemporary railroading? Now we're modeling in 1955, which is kind of a heyday of private rail transportation system before the government and Amtrak and so forth came in. And so we have to model modern railroading also. So what we decided to do is to model Lower Michigan, the three, three major rail lines that go across Lower Michigan, and model those uh, in modern times with uh, Amtrak, with high-speed Amtrak, and long trains and a scenery dominating the railroad. The third layout we're talking about and looking at is a uh, N scale layout that will focus on contemporary Michigan operations in southern Michigan. Basically what's going through Holland and Grand Rapids and Lansing, you know, all those areas in there and we want to really depict what's happening in those towns in terms of the railroads. And uh, we think with N-Scale, we're, we're devoting about 2,000 square feet to just that alone. That'll be an enormous N-Scale layout. So now, with three layouts to be displayed in the museum, Ralph developed his latest plan for the facility. The proposed Grand Rapids Model Railroad Museum will be about 24,000 square feet. We wanted to keep it one story, no stairways, no elevators, no steps, no ramps, keep it just as simple as possible. And we've been able to achieve that with this design. We kept it basically a simple T-shape with the main entrance centered on the front elevation right here. Uh, we have another entrance down at this point in here and an exit to the patio area back in here. The Sunset Valley will be located in this area in here, approximately 7,600 square feet for the Sunset Valley, which will allow for wide public aisles of approximately eight feet wide so that uh, people aren't bumping into other people uh, throughout. The T-shaped building is uh, designed such that we have an O-scale uh, down at this end of the building uh, in here, and that's 52 by 42, about 2,100 square feet. And at the opposite end, we have the N-scale Modern Michigan Operations, which is 64 by 32 feet. In each case, we have a storage room and a workroom 
for each of those layouts. So O-Scale has its own workroom and storage room. N-Scale has its own storage and workroom. In the case of N-Scale, we will also have two dispatch rooms that are glass enclosed and people can see how modern dispatching works by looking through the window and seeing the computer operation for that. The HO scale layout will also have three different dispatch centers located within that room and those will also be glass enclosed and they will depend upon the, the era that they are replicating. We also have a multi-purpose room with a flat floor and a kitchen and storage room in here. If we have uh, flea markets or train shows or classes of some sort, we can hold those in the multi-purpose room. We have a lecture hall with four tiers uh, plus a flat floor uh, and uh, we do have barrier-free access to that and it holds approximately 47 people. We have a machine workshop where dusty operations can take place, whether it's with wood sanding or drilling or lathes or whatever. All that can be ducted to the outside so we don't contaminate the layout rooms with the dust. We also have a crew lounge in this area. We have public restrooms that are barrier free at this point. Entrance vestibule here. We have a gift shop with ticket sales in here. We have an office with a security room here. And we have um, a historical research room in this area in here. And building facilities include the mechanical room back in here, custodial workshop, storage, trash, the electrical in this area in here. The site plan will be approximately four acres total, which will allow for about 80 cars of parking. And included in that will be six barrier-free spots near the front door. We also will have a patio out back. We'll have sidewalks all around the building to allow access into the different layout rooms to bring in modules or whatever equipment we need to. Uh, we'd like to have it well landscaped so that it, it looks like it's been here for for a long time. We hope to have it close to a public road. We'll have a sign out front indicating Grand Rapids Model Railroad Museum. Plan on having a caboose sitting out front uh, plus cross box, other railroad features, signal lights, so on, just to really kind of get the attention of the people that are driving by. Our goal is to find a site that has public uh, sewer and water and uh, at least uh, four acres, and we're working on some options right now. As part of their 501c3 nonprofit charter, the museum will be making continuous education a key focus. But to Bruce and the museum board, it's more than just playing with toy trains. Take, for example, this Yale campus interview with William Brown, director of the Eli Whitney Museum and Workshop. He highlights the profound influence building a model train layout can have on preparing the next generation for life in a high-tech society. And trains have another very important deep appeal, which is it addresses the, the curiosity about controlling a whole system, a whole world all at once. And a, a train layout is, a, is an organic whole that is integrated by a, a set of rules that are very much the essence of computer programming. Uh, trains only make yes, no, left, right turns when, they, when they're switched. And that's absolutely the, the, the beginnings of the logic that generates modern computer culture. We want this to be a hands-on operating railroad. Most museums' railroads are trains running around in circles, so it might be disguised a little bit, but it's trains just going around and around and around in circles. The same train here, we want to demonstrate real live transportation system and the education that one can learn from doing it. To keep pace with the needs of the 21st century, educators have developed a new approach to learning called STEM, which focuses on science, technology, engineering, and math. Bruce and the group want to incorporate STEM as well as build on STEM in creative ways. 
There is a great deal of emphasis now in the public education and charter schools and public both on the STEM, standing for science, technology, engineering, and math, which are really the key ingredients of the sciences that are so vital and important in this modern world. And it's a lot of areas where our education system is, has really fallen down compared to other countries that really put their emphasis on the sciences. And we've gotten quite far away from that. You go to our engineering schools and most all our students are foreign students uh, brought here to learn and a lot of them go home to their own countries. And so the government has started this STEM program to promote those and hopefully it's working. But I think and we can qualify for all the STEM features right within our museum, but we can go one step further and bring in art. Because art is such a big part of model railroading. Not only the 3D scenery, but rock carving and rock generation and how to create trees to simulate the different brands of trees and sand for sand dunes. And I mean, it's art through and through and through. The 3D as well as the 2D, your background painting, and then the trick of how you blend them two together so you can't tell the transition point. And it turns out if we add art to STEM, what do we get? We get STEAM, which is a beautiful railroad terminology, a railroad term, and very fitting. And if you read a lot of the current education literature, it is beginning to feature STEAM. And so I look at us as being one of the pioneers to promote STEAM throughout the uh, community and hopefully throughout the world in our own way. Right in our founding documents of a Michigan Corporation and our documents for a 501c tax exempt status, both those documents feature education as a big part of our mission of our museum project. And to support that, we have included in the design a lecture hall that holds about 50 people in raised seating, but we've picked a number 50 because it can take a typical school bus and the whole school bus can go in there for a lecture presentation. And we're looking at classes, both live, and we're looking at uh, videos that we can show and videos that we can create. Everything from teamwork and how you put together a team, how you accomplish a mission, and then all the details of the skills you need to build a museum quality model railroad. Everything from art and plastering to carpentry to electronics to uh, straight electrical to civil engineering to lay out your tracks and super elevation and curves and different frog angles and speed of trains and signaling and computer interfacing. And so education is gonna be a big part of our, of our mission. Uh, we see young people who really don't have a lot of focus in life, but once they get into model railroading and see the electronics involved and the mathematics involved, they see, you know, I can really learn something here. And I, I've talked to uh, young people, uh, just talked to a young fellow the other day at Northern Michigan University. He just got a job with the Union Pacific as a dispatcher uh, next summer, and he's been doing dispatching on Bruce's Sunset Valley for the last year. I mean, this is literally job training for people who want jobs in, in real railroads. And we're seeing more and more young people come in and join with us on, on this adventure. The other thing I might mention is I think for retirees like myself, it, it really gives us something to do during the day, uh, not only in terms of learning new skills, such as how to landscape things or learning electronics, uh, but it's also just kind of relaxing to come in and talk to people that, uh, you know, uh, you know, and uh, common interests, you know, get to know each other rather than just sitting home uh, watching TV, drinking beer. You know, we don't need that. 
I'll just say we're putting together a plan right now for fundraising. Uh, of course, being a nonprofit 501c3 is going to help us a lot in that regard. Uh, but we are going to reach out uh, uh, for donations to people here in Grand Rapids area. And uh, we're developing lists of people that may donate. Uh, also, railroads that may donate, manufacturers of model railroad equipment that may donate. There's a lot of uh, manufacturers I know are very interested in this and have indicated as such to Bruce over the years. First thing we'll do is set up the uh, Sunset Valley and then we'll work on the end scale and that'll be open throughout the construction period so people can see it really all put together. With a goal of modeling all the landmarks that exist, or all, most all of them that we can fit in, in Grand Rapids, in Holland, in Lansing, all the close-in communities. I've always lived in Michigan, and my wife did too. We've been childhood sweethearts since the first grade. She was secretary of a train, Sunset Valley Train Club when she was 10. I proposed seriously at 13, but she said we were too young. So at 18, she accepted. But anyway, the railroad and the Sunset Valley has always been an integral part of both of our lives. And I think the key thing is all the volunteers that work on it want to preserve this because this is unique. I mean, you just don't see model railroads this size, with this detail, with this kind of operational capability. Uh, it, it's just really a unique experience.